what I do is I have a federal permit to trap the endangered Alabama beach mouse. And so uh, I work for Volker Incorporated and we are a sub consultant to the uh, state park. And what we do is we come out um, twice a year, spring and fall, two weeks each time. And we trap the Alabama beach mouse. We mark them, we uh, release them. And then we use the data to see if the populations are increasing or decreasing or uh, other parameters such as like is the body weight going up, is the body weight going down, and that's a good indicator of what might be going on with the population. And so we're using these live traps like this little trap so that the mouse will go in it, it doesn't get hurt at all, we can collect the data we need from the mouse and then release it. So you want to show us how this works? Okay, so um, this is, will obviously be set down on the ground, but it's called a Sherman live trap. It's made of aluminum, it's real lightweight, and in the back there is a lever in the back so that when a mouse goes inside there, there's like oats in the back, so they'll smell that. So then when the mouse goes inside, they'll push down on the plate and it'll trap the mouse inside there live until I come back or early in the morning before the sun comes up. And then I'll get each trap and I'll open it up. I'll get the mouse out and then I'll process the mouse and get all the data off of it. And then I'll put an ear tag in it if it doesn't already have an ear tag and then I'll release it on the spot. So maybe I'll catch it again the next night, maybe I won't. So that's the way we kind of keep up with them and track them. And when you put these traps out in the dune field out here, you're putting them in rows, like spaced out a, different, a specific amount, and then rows coming back. So you have like a system to keep up with the different traps. Right, and so that way we can set traps year after year in about the same location. So that doesn't change, but the population around it does or might change. So it's a, it's a standard way of, of uh, keeping up with um, where we've been and where we're going. Why is it important for us to know and understand population numbers of our beach mice. Okay, so why, why do we need to know that information is the beach mouse is a fairly delicate species and so we call it an indicator species and a lot of ecosystems have indicator species. They might be plants, they might be birds. In this case, it's the Alabama beach mouse. So if we see a trend in the mouse population starting to go down or if body weights are going down, that lets us know early on that something is changing in the environment and so we know to start looking for other things that might be going on. So we're out here looking, looking for uh, beach mouse burrows and what a mouse will do to, uh, to help hide their burrow is they'll make, a, uh, they'll make a plug out of vegetation, out of grass and weeds and things like that and they'll make it like in a little ball and after the last mouse goes in the hole they'll pull that, that matting of, of, of grass and, and weeds into the hole a ways, kind of like a plug. And so when they're down in the burrow chamber, if anything moves that grass plug or that ball, they feel an air pressure. They don't hear it, or maybe they'll feel vibrations, but they'll feel the air pressure when that, when that plug gets moved in the hole. And so that alarms them that something is around their entrance burrow. So that it's like an early warning system. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's three o'clock in the morning. Um, not used to being out this early, but if you're going to learn about beach mice, you have to be out when they are, since they're nocturnal. So we have in this trap a beach mouse. We're here with Trent again. It's a beautiful night on the beach. The stars are gorgeous and we're excited to see what we have here in this trap. All right, so the first thing I do is just check inside carefully to make sure that there is a mouse in there and there is in fact a mouse in there moving around. Sometimes you'll get a ghost crab. Sometimes the trap will just be shut because of you know natural, natural elements. So work with it down here on the ground. document almost everything you can. Station number one, got the date. Start time, three o'clock. You want me to do your book? No, I got it. Just stand back, I'm doing science. <laughs> All right, so I got a, 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 a measure to, to, to weigh them. I've got a, um, this helps put the ear tag in. So this device allows them to kind of clip onto their tail and it, it's padded so it doesn't hurt them and then you can right. hang it like this and figure out how much each mouse weighs in grams. That's correct. All right. The back of the trap opens up so you put the back of the trap in the bag and make a nice tight seal. You pop open the back of the trap. Then you kind of scare the mouse down into the bag a little bit. You just kind of give them a little swing there with some <laughs> tripodal force to get them down in the bag it make sure he's still in there and I feel him right there so then I can release 
check the you recheck the uh, trap to make sure there's no other mice in there or anything else and in this case we just have the one mouse turn it upside down so I know to clean that one tomorrow morning all right close your bag off pat them down tension behind the neck not too much pressure you can feel the neck there you've been doing it a while you can do this pretty good pinch down not too hard they got a lot of extra skin so they roll around a lot kind of like the scruff of the neck and you of get a good kitty. grip and there is an endangered alabama beach mouse and it's a new capture it mouse. is a new capture there's no, no tag. there's no ear tag so this is a new mouse and so i can tell it's a female it's a female she's not lactating she's not pregnant we also take data on the tail stripe there's a 10 percent on her tail stripe there the tiniest right there. little stripe right there on the right tail. Right there, a little bit of stripe. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So they keep up with that for genetic reasons. All right. So we're going to put her back in the bag, and we're going to get ready to put an ear tag in her. So then you just make sure she gets back in the bag, runs through the back, tap it down. There she is. Twist it off, and then keep it closed while you work. All right. So you document all that stuff. All right. So it's an adult. We have a female. The reproduction is not pregnant, not lactating, tail stripe is approximately 10%. We'll get the weight in a minute. And I know the last mouse I marked was 140, got a circle on it, so this will be mouse 141, put a circle around that. Makes it easier to find in the data when you're looking back. So here are the ear tags. They are super small, because they have to be. These are not um, radio tags, they're just numbers. 141 is off of that end right there. On a windy night, this can be very problematic. You load the ear tag, it's, it's a crimping tool. So it just, there's a little hole inside the, uh, there's a little hole in the end of this little flat area. And then this little piercing part will go through the ear and into the other side of the ear tag. way down in the base of the ear get a good pinch on it there we go she's done gonna wear Let's see how she weighs 12 grams and here she goes Make sure there's no mouse in there. There's nothing left in there. Turn it over so I know that's a capture trap and it takes extra cleaning. Pat them up. All right, recapture because I can feel the um, I can feel the ear tag in there already. There we go. We got a male. This is mouse number 100, and he is from a year ago. I trapped him last spring and I've trapped him this week also. So I don't have to, I don't have to weigh him or anything like that. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna flat out release them because the less you handle them, the less stress they receive and the better off the whole program is. So you just, here we go, hold still. It's a great night to be mousing. this number real quick 136 what's the longest percent of the tail stripe 100 we used oh, to have all one the way down. yeah mm -hmm. So 136 here, and then last night, I don't know if there's another 136 in here, but she's back. And so since I already got this data from two nights ago, I don't have to take it again. I just carry it over. So I don't have to wear it or nothing. I'm just gonna let her feel like she got out of the bag on her own. 